having me. My name is Mel Coleman and I'm from the Department of Primary Industries in Australia. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was future-proofing our, our kelp forests and how we can actually go about doing that. I'm sure you've heard all week um, about how amazingly beautiful and important our, our kelp forests are. They're extremely ecologically important and economically important. They provide food and shelter to a whole range of different critters. They underpin fisheries and they provide, you know, a whole raft of um, different ecosystem goods and services that we rely on as, as, as humans. Yeah, despite the importance of kelp forests, they are in decline and we've lost kelp forests from many parts of the world. And you can see here from this graphic that one of the major causes of decline are um, climate-induced um, change, things like warming and marine heat waves. We can see from the sort of reds and sort of orange colours here that we've started to lose kelp forests from places like Western Australia, Japan, um, the US and even Norway. And what is becoming really clear is that climate change, climate change is starting to outpace the ability of kelp to adapt in many parts of their range. And the question is now, what can we actually do about this? So traditionally, people have sought to recover and to revive areas. Um, that is to, I guess, reactively bring back what was lost. But I think it's pretty apparent now that um, this won't be effective in our future oceans and that we really need to start reinforcing and redefining kelp forests to proactively boost their resilience to, to future change, what we might call future proofing. And this is essentially where we anticipate what environmental conditions our future oceans will face and we take proactive um, actions now to prepare um, kelp forests um, for those future conditions. So one way that we could do this is to introduce what we might call climate resilient kelp individuals or genotypes into existing kelp forests to proactively boost their thermal resilience um, to thermal stress. And our work off Western Australia has already revealed where these individuals might occur. So firstly, we've shown using genomics that warm low latitude populations have been selected for thermal tolerance and could be good candidates. Even at our cooler mid-latitude sites, we know that there exist certain strong genotypes or a mix of individuals, including some that tend to perform a lot better than others under thermal stress. And again, we could target these in our, in our future proofing efforts. Um, thirdly, we've also shown that after extreme um, events, in this case after a marine heat wave, that there is uh, directional selection for thermal tolerance, which increases the frequency of heat adapted individuals in populations. So we know now how to get our hands on these um, on these resilient individuals that we could add into populations. So how do we get them into those populations? That's the next, the next big step. So we could use uh, traditional techniques for restoring kelp forests. Um, that is harvesting adult plants and, and transplanting them into, into new and degraded areas. But I can tell you from experience that this is extremely labour intensive. It limits the number of donor plants that you, can, that you can use and therefore the number of different genotypes you can add into populations. It can only be done on small scales. It costs a lot of money and it's just really, really hard work. Um, so a couple of years ago now, colleagues here in Norway developed what we call green gravel. And green gravel is a relatively simple technique. It's simply uh, rocks or gravel or small boulders that are seeded with kelp gametophytes. And they're then grown up in the lab and at, at uh, some point they're scattered over degraded reefs. And we've shown that this can work in trials now in Norway, but also in Australia. And more recently, colleagues have had success in Portugal. And I think what is really special about green gravel is that it's a new technique that is going to allow us to actually add these selected or these thermally tolerant genotypes or any other genotype for that matter um, to be rapidly reseeded into degraded reefs and at large scale. It's also extremely cost effective and it's easy and can often negate the need to actually use um, scuba divers. And green gravel has shown such promise. The projects utilising it are now going on all around the globe as part of our green gravel action group. And this is a group of, of researchers and restoration practitioners that are working on all sorts of different kelp species and habitats and restoring kelp forests using green gravel. And we come together in, in meetings and workshops to share our successes and also our failures and learn from each other and basically to take this promising restoration technique into the future. And what's going to be really exciting to explore are these future proofing strategies. So using green gravel to try to boost the resilience of, of kelp forest to future stress. Um, and essentially, I guess, ensure that um, kelp forests continue um, to thrive in our future oceans. Thank you.